It is not about whether we have lots of money or don't have lots of money. It is not about how we can attract more money. It is about going much deeper than that to the possibility of truly inhabiting or embodying our inner source of abundance. And abundance does get mixed up with how much money we have. But I'm speaking about an abundance that, yes, may have a relationship to that, an impact to that, may flow into that. But first, we must explore what abundance is, our true abundance, our true inner wealth. We could say our enoughness. That enoughness, I will say again, is not about whether we have enough on the three-dimensional level. Because on the three-dimensional level, there is transaction, there is doing, there is having, and all of that is part of the human experience. And in some ways, that is not where the attention needs to go. The enoughness is within. And it does have an impact on the periphery, on the surface. We'll explore that in this conversation. <clears throat> the enoughness is our essential wholeness, our essential wholeness, which, is come, which we come to know, we come to recognize when the seeking mechanism of ego comes to an end, either in this moment, temporarily, but we don't even need to say temporarily because in this moment, it is eternity. This moment doesn't have a beginning or ending. In the now, the cessation of the egoic seeking mechanism, the restlessness, the inability to simply die into the now and know the fulfillment of that, that's enough. That's enough. as part of our human experience, that cessation of the seeking mechanism, psychological seeking mechanism, it may cease. It's not the driver anymore. And then there is an abiding recognition I would say an embodiment of wholeness where the psychological construct of I am not enough and therefore I need to seek love, recognition, approval, acquisition from the outside in order to temporarily feel as if I'm enough, that comes to an end. This is the foundation. Without this, no amount of thinking about external wealth, money, abundance on that level will make any difference because it'll never be enough. The seeking mechanism within the psychological seeking mechanism will mistake the external 
for its restlessness and go on. Yeah, it's called the matrix, <laughs> running around in circles, causing us to run around in circles, trying to accumulate more, and so on and so on. Yeah, Accumulate more, do more, get more, secure more, stash away more, and so on. And there we are caught in the matrix which keeps us separate, cut off from our innate wholeness, our innate enoughness. It also keeps us in the matrix of fear. Yeah? Fear that I won't have enough money. Fear that I need to do more in order to have enough money. And so on and so on. And much of the world, the matrix of the world, is driven by that. Or the sense that my self-worth is my worthiness is derived from how much I have. Again, cutting us off from the true source of abundance, the true knowing of our innate enoughness. So it does have an impact. This inner realization does have an impact on how our human lives operate. They either operate by running around in circles, <clears throat> either mentally or emotionally or physically, yeah, or all three. Or we move in the world, and of course we all move in the marketplace of the world, whatever that marketplace is. Even your own kitchen is the marketplace. <laughs> yeah, or it could be a bigger marketplace than that. <clears throat> yeah. From this innate wholeness, we move into the marketplace without the running around in circles, without the grasping for self-worth, for enoughness, for security, for approval, for what I think I want in order to make this next moment better than this moment, and so on and so on. We move from enoughness, and enoughness has a spaciousness, and a flow, and an equanimity, and a trust in the goodness of what is. And this does have an impact. It has an impact directly on the vibrational field of our own lives, the environment, yeah, the environment which moves from within outwards, yeah, in all directions. It does have an impact. And the thing is, whether, whether in material terms there is very little, let's call it simplicity, or whether there is more complexity, it doesn't make any difference to that innate enoughness. And that makes all the difference. That makes all the difference. It doesn't negate the reality, if you like, of tending to or attending to our primary needs on a physical level. <laughs> yeah, whatever that might be, clean clothes, fresh food, shelter, and so on. It is not an abdication of that or a turning away from the value of that. But when we operate from enoughness, even the smallest amount on the material level will sustain us and nourish us and 
from that place is more likely to flow and grow, yeah? flow and grow. So it's not about the personhood finding some way of applying the law of attraction to imagine what I want. Yeah, think what I want or even feel what I want because it's not coming from that place. That is a temporary band-aid which may or may not work. It simply makes the self, the personhood, feel better that it's doing something about its situation and is going to achieve its wishes, desires, and so on. No. From a deeper place, this goes much deeper than that. Yeah, From the seed of goodness, from the seed of enoughness, everything thrives. <laughs> 